eyebrows. I am from Scotland, so I'm allowed to complain. But I think we'll have the debate there. I did this at a convention yonks ago and it was quite good. So imagine that's a split in the room. Because I've got these tickets for the Stereo Symphonic, I want to do the Doctor Who theme gag. Right, I want this half of the room to go right after I give you, and then I want this half of the room to go So you were aware when you saw Blink what the Weeping Angels were? Yes, and I thought they were absolutely terrifying. And uh, you missed out on the Weeping Angels because? I was too young. Yeah. I think I was, I was maybe 16 or 17 when Blink did, but then I was 18 when I started filming with Time of Angels Flesh and Stone. So uh, you get the call. Yes. What was your reaction when you found out? It was yours. Well, I actually missed the phone call. <laughs> because I, I turned up for the audition, and on my way home, I, I, my phone must have been on mute. So I missed the phone call, so I got it home, and I looked at my phone, listened to the message, and then I just ran outside and told my friend, I'm on Doctor Who! Wonderful. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the audience? No? <laughs> what? Well, Melbourne, the queues were out the door. Oh, 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 we do, we do. Well, if you want to come to the microphone stand. There's another stand. Is there a microphone? Oh, there's a weeping angel up there. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that lady there. He was before me. Ladies first, okay. Oh. <laughs> um, hi Sarah. Hi. So, what was it like working on the set while you were um, playing the Weeping Angel and does everybody get you to do the stare at them or not? Well, the set was amazing as you can imagine. I mean, I, what, the first time I was on set, they still had David Tennant's TARDIS and they had Matt Smith's TARDIS as well, so I got to have a look around I had a look around both and there was um, a chance where I got to play on Matt Smith's TARDIS as well, which is, which is very cool, but um, yeah. Did you steal anything? No. Why not? <laughs> because I want to work there again. <laughs> but you're from Wales. <laughs> that was a bit mean, wasn't it? It says a Scotsman. <laughs> already stole your sunglasses and this baby will be mine after this thing. <laughs> uh, that chap there. 
Hi. Uh, when you've been in costume and makeup, have you ever thought of pranking anyone? I haven't intentionally done it. <laughs> but um, there was one time on set I used the ladies and I walked out of the door and there was someone waiting to go in. And I was there, full mask and everything, and she jumped back and screamed. <laughs> but I did, I did apologise to her. How can you go to the toilet and all that? Get up. Is that not really stiff, the skirt, or is it actually... Yeah, it's because the skirt it comes off. Yeah. Right. I'm, not, I'm not stuck in that all day. I'm not just, like, standing up all day. Explain the makeup process to us, then what happens when you go in. It's Sarah. What happens? Basically, it takes about three hours for the main makeup to go on, and it involves being painted. Um, they use this splatter paint then to create like um, dark brown and dark greys to make it look a, a bit more aged. And then they airbrush the lines onto me. Then you put the corset on for the wings where you've got metal, metal pins in your back. Um, and then you stick the, the top on. And that's, that's it for, most, for the first few, um, not hours, but about an hour, and then you need half hour call to stick the nails on, to glue the face on, to stick the wings on, and to step into the skirt then. Yeah. What's the longest you've ever been um, under it all? For one take? Or for one... Oh, um, that was probably in Angels Take Manhattan because I had to do about three scenes in one go. And I was probably under the makeup for about must have been about two and a half hours under the under the full mask. Yeah. Wait, that, that, that wasn't a bit. Did you go to America to shoot the graveyard scene? No, no, I, I just went up the road. <laughs> <laughs> that was the scene where you killed Amy and Rory. I did not kill them. You did in my head. I did not kill them. I just sent them back in time. They lived a full and happy life together. You know, you should be thanking me. You said the back to the dinosaur era and they were both eaten on arrival. And if anyone dare asks me if I'm cosplaying Amy Pond, they'll get a punch. <laughs> Don't whistle, I'm a to all that rubbish. Another question, please. Hi. Hello. Um, is it worse to get the makeup on or off? Ooh, oh, definitely. There's only, there's only one way to get it off, and that's to scrub it off with towels and flannels. And that takes about an hour and a half. And most of the time it's night shoot, so you're there at like 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. All you want to do is go to sleep, and you just have to scrub this paint off. Gosh. Um, that chap there? Sorry, lady. <laughs> this close to my face so they could see me breathing so they would ask me to stop breathing <laughs> for the shot and they, would, they wouldn't they would tell me when I'm allowed to breathe again so I'd be there holding my breath and I'd just kind of go <laughs> just trying to let the breath out Now Weeping Angels isn't the only uh, creature you played in Doctor you played the Time Zombie and Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS Yes, that was Clara's Time Zombie Clara's things on it. Um, in a very specific way of moving, did you have a movement coach? Yes, um, there's a movement coach that works with, um, she does the Cybermen stuff, she does the Weeping Angels stuff, she does a lot of the monsters. But she's a really good coach, her so name is. Wonderful. Um, yes, that lady there. <laughs> Hi Sarah, I'm just wondering, um, what was the audition process like for Weeping Angel? Because I can't imagine you were just standing there for 10 minutes. So. No, no. Um, she gave us um, a little routine of the, the arm movements, ranging from the nice angel to the angry angel. So we just kind of workshopped those movements. And we had to, for some reason, we had to walk to the camera really slowly. 
as well without moving too much. I'm not quite sure that maybe that was the movement in the woods that she was testing, but yeah. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> We're good for now. Good for now. All right. Why are you standing up behind the microphone then? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to David as a lieutenant and Scarfe, you're not keen for a question. No. All right, okay, we'll sit down. <laughs> I think I've scared everyone away. Do we have another question? Yeah, the microphone's there, man with arm up. <laughs> Unless you can shout. statues around where you've got pictures of statues and since they made the fact that an image of an angel turns into an angel as well, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of threat there. Now have you been following um, Peter Capaldi's first season? Most of it, yeah. I'm three episodes behind. What do you think, Peter? I think he's great. Yeah, I think you you can tell you can just tell that he's a big, big fan of the show, and that it really comes out in his acting. And yeah, I think I think his doctor's really, really good, yeah. What do you guys think of Peter? <laughs> Did you feel that, Peter? <laughs> you can go back to sleep now. <laughs> Is that a question? I'm um, just a little girl. Ah, hello. Hello. How many, um, How many weeping angels are there? Ooh. Most of the time, it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there are shots, actually, where um, I did some stuff in front of the green screen, and it's the, the um, shot where the angels are in the woods, and there's like a whole bunch of them, and I'm like, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. <laughs> So there's, there's quite a few where it's just me, but um, when I first started, there were eight of us because we had four of the fully formed angels, two of the deformed angels, and two of the semi-formed angels. But I was lucky enough to be able to play all three, and there was one day when I played two of them on the same day. So that, that was quite that was quite interesting. Now you mentioned uh, in Melbourne that you could spot which angel you were because of the, your was it your wrist or your, My arms. your arm? Yeah, I have quite strange arms. <laughs> so when I straighten my arms, they don't go straight, they kind of go out on an angle. <laughs> so that was interesting for you, yeah? So, uh, all oh, that easy. <laughs> she was a nightmare on the flight coming, did you know that? Really? No, I'm not joking. I love you to bits, really. Oh, thank you. No, don't. <laughs> Is that another hand? Chaperoning as well. So, uh, just... Have you ever kissed any of them? No. Oh, okay. What what could I do with a weeping angel at first? <laughs> just like, you know, 
Amen. <laughs> Another question, please. <laughs> oh, you've, you've decided. Wonderful. I was just letting the local girl go there. Um, what's been your favourite Whitney Angel um, scene to film, and what's been the most challenging one? The most challenging one was probably my first day, because that was the day when they got me to stop breathing. <laughs> so that, that was quite difficult at times. Um, and what was the other one? Um, your favourite scene to film. Favourite scene. Oh, that would probably be in Angels Take Manhattan. Either the scene in the graveyard or the scene where I'm chained up. Just because there's a lot of interaction with the with the other characters in those scenes. So it was, it was quite fun to just be on the set with them. Yeah. Um, I you scheduled to uh, appear in the, the upcoming series or, or the one that's on now? Yeah. No. Unfortunately no. We spoke about this last night. Um, but tell the guys how long you know before you're actually appearing in an episode. It can range from two months to two days before. There was, there was one time I was called two days before the before the actual shoot. I think it depends on how many costume fittings I need to go to. Yeah. Another question? Uh, I'd just like to start by saying hello to Dave. I'm also from Scotland. Oh. You found another one. I know. <laughs> We're taking over. <laughs> and my um, question is, what sort of uh, work did you put in to get to the role? What kind of work did you put in to get the role, like auditions or anything like that? For the angel. Yeah, for the angel. It was just the one audition, just the one audition where I worked with the, the choreographer because my um, that was that was quite a quick process. It, um, the edition was, I think it was on a Wednesday or something, and I had to go up to London for a costume fitting on the Friday, but the other angels had to um, re-audition in London, so my, mine was quite a quick process because I was filming for like two weeks later, I think it was. Yeah. Where in Scotland are you from? Broxburn, West Lothian. Well, that's a dump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, that's why I'm here, man. <laughs> Question. Um, I, I, I have a question. Um, it seems that something that uh, actors don't get enough credit for in uh, acting is uh, the process of standing still for extended periods of time. I was wondering if you could maybe share with us some of the practices you may have uh, to uh, just stay still in front of the camera and uh, not blink yourself. Sorry, what was the last bit? <laughs> if, if you could maybe ex explain for us some of the things that you have to do to uh, not blink yourself for uh, extended periods of time in front of the camera. Well, I don't have to not blink, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, because the, you've got the mask and they've actually got separate eyepieces that they stick into the mask. So I don't have to. But um, to stand still, it's just a lot of, a lot of concentration while you're under the mask. But that's all you can do because you can't see anything. Uh, you're limited with your hearing as well, so basically you just you just concentrate really hard. Yeah. Next. Hey, um, there's a picture online uh, of a, a clip of a couple of weeping angels dancing in a costume. Is that you? Yes. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> Another question. Yeah, there's a right up there in the balcony. Yep, yeah. half a girl. Who's your favourite doctor? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> no, my my two <laughs> would have to be Matt and David because David was the doctor when I was growing up so he was he was kind of my doctor when I was younger. But
but then of course I've worked with Matt, so yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tough one. Did you find yeah. that there are different sort of energies as actors when you were working with them? I haven't worked with David. Ah, oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You should have been paying attention to Yeah, you yeah. should. <laughs> So why did you talk oh, David because you were growing up with him? Uh, yeah. yeah. He's from Paisley, I'm from Paisley, Stephen Moss is from Paisley. Yeah. A lot of times I'm from Paisley, doesn't <laughs> Another question, please. Um, so when you're on set and you're filming, I'm assuming you can't see much because you've got this mask on. Um, is it really weird and disconcerting to like be sort of blacked out from everything and everyone's acting around you? It's not too bad, but there were two instances. Um, the, the 3D trailer that went around to introduce Matt as the doctor. Um, for that scene, I had to be on a turning board. And as far as I knew, I was holding onto Matt's arms, just turning around. So they put the makeup on me, they stick the eyes on, and then suddenly there's this really loud noise and what they actually did was they had a huge fan. So I so that was a bit a bit scary, first of all, and my wings were kind of flapping around in the back. So that, that was a bit more difficult to stay still as well. And there was another instance in Angels Take Manhattan where I was in the graveyard. We were on top of a hill. Now, you have to be on flat because of the because of the skirt, but there wasn't much flat around, so they had to kind of like stick some boards underneath the back of me, otherwise it just kind of like topple backwards. <laughs> so I was, I was trying hard, oh, that, that's the time I really tried hard to stay still, because otherwise, you know, a bit of a movement, you're down the hill. Well, I'm afraid time's run out with Sarah. Are you guys here the whole weekend? Oh, that's good. Be, have, be have a chat. Opportunities, but uh, in the meantime, please raise the roof for the lovely Sarah Louise Madison. <laughs> Are we ready to go? We've done the tickets here, Muppet. <laughs> Who is this bit? Is he famous in Auckland? <laughs> no, it shows. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, well, I've just been briefed down there, uh, and uh, what's going to happen is um, Jenna should be here soon. So when she comes along, it's going to be amazing, it's going to be great, we're all going to be very excited. You're all behaving extremely well, by the way, this room is filled to capacity, so all we can say is if there are gaps in the middle of any of the rows, do move in, let people, you've all done it already, look, you're amazing, you're amazing. Um, move around the back so there's lots of room, but we are filled pretty much to capacity, so if we can't take any more and we go, no, don't burst into tears, you'll get no sympathy, cool? Awesome, right, so Jenna is only a couple of minutes away, we're going to have a short break, uh, just stay where you are just for now, we're just going to reset for about four or five minutes, all cool with that? Yes? Okay, be patient, she's coming, thank you.